Can't believe I'm about to do this. Welcome back to the studio, everyone. It's time to turn the elk into bronze. But in order for me to get it to bronze, the first thing I have to do is destroy it. I really hope I don't screw this one up. Let's get started. Now with something like the elk, there's just so many angles, so many dimensions with the antlers and everything, it becomes too complex to mold in one piece. So what I need to do is cut the antlers off and mold those separately, and then reattach them later on. One option is to cut the antlers off right at the base, then I would reattach them in wax. However, with the investment casting I do, I don't have a flask big enough for this all put together. So in that case, I would have to cast the antlers separate and weld them back on when they're bronze. And if that's the case, I'm never gonna be able to fit my TIG torch at the base here. So what I would have to do is cut it in a place where I have room to work the TIG torch around, in which case I would wanna leave these bottom tines. Now before I cut anything, I'm first gonna measure the tips of the antlers so I know how to put them in the right position when I put them back on. Then I'm gonna wrap some electrical tape around where I'm gonna cut that, just to avoid any chipping or fraying that might happen when I do do the cutting. It is kind of nerve wracking to take something that you've spent so many hours working on and just cut it to pieces. I have to trust the process because this is the only way to get it to bronze. Decisions were made, we're going with it now. For the antlers, I'm gonna use a standard two-part block mold. I first need to bed it in clay, and then I'll be able to pour the silicone rubber to make the first half. The more cleanly the clay intersects the antler, the more clean my parting lines are gonna be. I square off the edges, and then I use cardboard to make a simple box to hold the silicone. I use a ball stylus to make indents, and that'll act as keys so it locks back together when the other piece is in place. I'll pour the rubber, let it cure, and then I do the other side. And I do the same process for the other antler. Alright, well the antlers are setting, I need to think about how I'm going to do the mold for the rest of the body. I think I'll be able to get away with a three part mold. Two halves for the body and a plug for the antlers. Similar to when we molded the Impala and the Bison. However, since the cavity pour mold for the Fisher Skull was so successful, I'm tempted to do the same thing for this one. Every project I do is figured out as I go. Regardless, I need to bed it in clay, so let's do that. I lay down thin sheets of clay to build a bed and then I carefully try to remove it from the board it's attached to. My goal is just to not break the legs. I sometimes have issues venting the dew claws when I make these molds so I decided to put a little piece of sprue wax to the dew claw so hopefully I can get that to act as a vent later on. I use a different color clay to make the plug and I want to get it around the antlers and the ears so none of that gets entrapped when I make the two part mold for the body. I carved some small terraces in the bed so that'll help the two pieces lock together when it's finished as well. And this block of clay will act as the entrance for the wax when I pour. And I'll lay down some sprue wax that'll help form the venting. I never know how many keys to add, but I'll kind of go by feel. That looks about right. Okay, so it's set in the clay. I have terraces carved in there to help lock everything in place when it's finished. I have my vents planned out, so I think we're ready to put the cap on it. I'm going to do a cavity pour mold for this, so I'm going to separate the piece with plastic and then I lay a thin layer of clay over that. I 
I lay some tapered strips of clay along the back and that'll help form the key for the hard backer and the rubber mold. I also want to use it to help vent any air trapped when I pour the silicone too, so I'm going to angle them upward a little bit. I've used plaster in the past, but for this I'm going to skip to a stronger backer. So it's capped with fiberglass and it's really thin in some places. Kind of wondering if I should put a second coat on there or just go with it. Yeah, let's just go with it. I remove the clay and that creates the void that we pour the rubber into. I want to make sure to seal the edges with clay so none of the rubber leaks out. So the shell is made, we pulled this much clay out so I know I need to mix up this much silicone. I'll pour the rubber right in there and the void that we have in there will become my silicone mold. I want to put a clamp on it so it stays together when I pour the rubber. I use a tin based rubber that has a 10 to 1 mix ratio. I slowly pour the rubber in and make sure I give it time for all the air to come out. When the rubber's set, I can remove the clay and get it prepped to do the same thing on the other side. There's always a few stringers that end up in the gaps between the clay and the piece, so I cut those away and make sure it's nice and clean. Should have hit the clay with the mold release beforehand because this plastilina clay is a little sticky. But I'll add the mold release now and it's ready to pour the other side. There's one thing left that needs to be poured and that's the plug inside there. Almost there. I don't want to take the whole mold apart, but I want to make sure that I do my best to get all the clay and stringers out of there. So I use some dental tools to do that. Now I'll check out the antlers molds, and they all look good. I'll use a chisel to carve away the ridges where I had the sprues. That'll form the vents for the antlers. So I took my block mold and I painted some silicone on one side and now I have a hinge. So after all that, it's finally time to test this and see if it works. First I need to get the elk out of there and then we'll pour the wax in and see how it works. I want to pull the elk out of there without damaging it, but unfortunately I did crack the back leg. But as long as the mold works, I won't need to rebuild it or redo it. I clear away any of the vents and the clay for the gating so I can get the wax in and out. I pour the antlers and then it's ready to pour the body. This piece needs to be cast hollow so I pour wax in and out to make layers to build up to about a quarter of an inch thick. check out the antlers and they look pretty good. So the block molds have worked really well. I've made several sets of antlers but it's time to check out the big one. See how that one worked. Pretty bad parting line right there. So it's not terrible. Most of it turned out pretty well, but there's a pretty pronounced parting line along the nose and a really pronounced parting line on the back of the neck where that plug was. Now I should be able to blend that in with the wax chasing. It's just more work than I wish it would be. 
the cavity pour mold worked, and I might want to explore other methods for molding in the future. That being said, this is good enough to take us to the next level. So I'm just gonna have to do a little more wax chasing. We'll get it fixed up, and then this is on to bronze. I hope you enjoyed watching that. As always, your comments are welcome. If you have any advice, don't forget to check out some of my other projects, and don't forget to come back for the casting of this piece. It's gonna be a fun one. As always, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.